Hello everyone, Tovan here again and today I'm going to be showing you two ways on how you can add dynamic white noise or just noises to your sound. So what the heck is that? It's basically just the noise playing on top of a sound. The noise level is controlled based on the original sound's audio signal. So this is a sound, this is a drum loop from my song Wandering Steps. This is how it sounds with some additional white noise. This is how the wet signal sounds like. So that's basically what we're adding. This is how the white noise sounds. Combined with the dry signal. Now it's subtle, but it's it can be a cool way to add like high sparkly texture to your sound. So the first way of doing it is by using Destructor, and I'm going to use a triangle wave to demonstrate it. So first load Destructor, and uh, choose Distortion, select the Abrasive mode, and all you have to do is to reduce this gate threshold. So as you can hear, it introduces some sort of white noise. You also have control over a lot of things like the preamp, the dry and wet mix. So that's basically what you're introducing to the sound. You also have control over the post gate. And if you dislike the really nasty high frequency distortion, you can filter it. This is basically a bandpass that's going to filter the white noise. Center is DC offset. If you want to center your waveform, you can keep this checked. If you want to like do crazy experimental sound design, you can try and uh, leave this unchecked. And you also have control over oversampling. Now I'm not going to explain too much about what oversampling is. Just think it like this. When a sound goes past this sample rate, which is in this case 48,000 Hz, pitch-wise or frequency-wise, it's going to introduce some weird artifacts in the lower, like, lower frequencies. However, you can prevent that artifact from happening if you engage oversampling, which is basically anti-aliasing. So the more you add, the smarter it's going to filter those nasty artifacts. So I can kind of actually demonstrate it if I play a super high note. And also I'm going to disable the filter so that you can hear. So this is how it sounds like without oversampling at all. This is how it sounds like with it being obvious. As you can see with no oversampling, there are a lot of uh, frequencies left down there. Well, which doesn't make sense because if everything is being pitched up, there should be nothing left down there. So, oversampling, clean. See how clean it is? Well, it's not technically super duper clean, but it's like cleaner. I hope that made sense. You also have control over the input gain and the mix, the mix of the overall distortion that you're applying here. Well. That applies for every effect, like filter, chorus, or speaker. And you have the output gain, so you can also control that. And that's how you can achieve it by using Destructor. The second way of doing it is by using Edison. We're going to open Patcher and route the dry signal straight out so that we can hear stuff. Now we're going to add a peak controller, like hanging here, and we're going to split the dry signal so that this peak controller detects the original signal's peak, as you can see here. And now we're going to add a 3D balance right after this peak controller. And we're basically going to control this 3D balance volume with this peak controller's peak. So by basically right clicking on the peak controller, go to output, go to controllers, and then select peak. And go to the 3D balance, right click on the volume, activate, and then link it to the peak controller speak. Now, as you can see, whenever I play a note, 
it's basically detecting the peak here, the peak information, and it's being applied to the volume. Now we add an Edison here, like don't connect it to anything first, but what we're going to be using this for, basically you're going to generate a white noise inside Edison. And to do that, you have to have something within the Edison first in order to generate noise, white noise off of that. And I'm basically going to add silence insert on your keyboard. And now, as you can see, there's something in it. And now we go right click, go to tools and then synthesis in the synthesis section generate noise and i'm going to have to route this out so that you can hear stuff and now you have a white noise what we're going to do now is to play it but also loop it at the same time so that it keeps looping forever and now unroute that it is now just like a looped auto playing white noise now pay close attention here because routing in patcher can get confusing quickly we are basically going to take that white noise and route it into this 3d balance right here and if i route this 3d balance straight out you can't hear anything you can't hear the white noise anymore because its level is being affected by this 3d balance volume and since this peak controller knows the peak of the original sound already which is a triangle wave this means that whenever i play a note it's going to let some of that white noise through because again, it's being routed before that 3D balance. And you only want the white noise to go through and not the original sound again. So with that, unroute this peak controller from this 3D balance. Or you can keep routed in, go to the 3D peak controller and then click on mute. And now the only thing that we're getting from this peak controller is its peak and LFO information and nothing else. So I'm going to reroute the dry signal. And now whenever I play a note, the white noise gets triggered when I play a sound. You can also control like the decay. This is kind of like a release knob, almost. You can also control the tension to make it sound more crunched or more open you can also control the volume which is this you can also control the bass which is basically the lowest value and if i set it up you can hear the auto playing white noise because the the lowest value is now minus 22 db so it's always good to keep it at zero but you get the point and you know, you can now apply effects like filtering in this white noise. And you can use a bandpass. Now it has a built in filter, just like in Destructor. And also, you can go ahead and distort the original signal and the white noise signal at the same time. And you can also control its mix if you want to. And if you want to adjust the volume, just go inside the peak controller and adjust the volume. And don't forget, you can save this as a preset. Now, the cool thing about Edison is that you can literally drop any noise in. And I'm going to be using this, for example. And the thing about this is you can literally open this in any computer that does not have this sample and it will still load it in. And that is because the thing about Edison is when something is like being recorded in Edison or when you drop a sample inside Edison, it gets registered as a data, which means it's not like a it's not a, it's not a sample. If you delete the original sample that you dropped inside Edison, Edison will still load it when you load that exact preset. It only becomes a sample when you drag and drop it out of Edison. When it's in Edison, it's been registered as a data. So you can basically share this with anyone and it will open up just fine. So now when I play the sound, it's kind of quiet. So I have to bump the volume a little bit. 
So that's what I meant by dynamic white noise or just noises in general. So in conclusion, if you want fast results, go ahead and use Destructor. If you want to get fancy, use Edison inside Patcher. If you want to like add additional effects to the white noise itself or also the dry signal. So yeah, I hope that was uh, helpful. If you found this useful at all, please consider liking. And if you also feel like subscribing to my channel, you can. And with that, I will see you later again. Bye bye.